everybody, and welcome back to Miss Azriel's Gaming. So today we're going to continue with Lucifer Within Us. It's been a really interesting game so far. Definitely a different take on the mystery genre. And I've really been enjoying it. Hopefully you have too. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to the graveyard case. The daemon's final words haunted me. Lucifer was already among us. I wanted to destroy Mother Miriam's body to purge any traces of demonic influence. Abbot Gregory did not heed my words. Mother Miriam was to be given a proper burial. That afternoon, Inquisitor Virgil sent for me, asking urgently to meet him at the graveyard. St. Wallapurga's Abbey Graveyard. Praise Ein Sof. Thank you for coming to our aid so quickly, Sister Ada. You said it was urgent. Has something happened to Mother Miriam's body? No, in some ways. That would have been easier. There is now a second untimely death. Another murder. On the very same day. This can't be a coincidence. That isn't for me to say. But this time, the victim is a younger acolyte named Isaac. His remains were found in the grave that was dug for Mother Miriam. Poor kid's throat was slit. Gruesome. Who was at the graveyard when the body was found? Only three people were present this afternoon. A scholar, an embalmer, and a grave tender. Father Augustine is a scholar, visiting for Mother Miriam's funeral. The victim was his apprentice. Sister Nerissa, an embalmer with a sterling reputation, preparing Mother Miriam's body for burial. Finally, Abraham, the grave tender, a layman who has kept the grounds of the Abbey for many years. None of them say they were near the grave until after the body was discovered. Which means someone is lying. No matter. Ain Saf sees all. We will unmask their lies and bring the truth forward. I swear it. Okay, so we got more suspects this time. Which is quite interesting. Alright. Okay, so before I talk to anybody, I think I want to go around and collect evidence first. Can I get in there? Okay, so let's look at all the evidence first. So the embalmed body. Embalmed body. Identified as Mother Miriam, there's a large incision down her stomach. Judging from the uneven coloring and chemical scent, she appears partially embalmed. Swore there was another thing that had popped up there, but maybe it was just this one. Yeah, so Mother Miriam was the victim. That was from the last part, if you remember that. Um, it's she's the newly appointed voice of On Sof, uh, scheduled to receive an ether, an ether coronet implant at the workshop. Murdered in the morning. Okay, so let's see blood, muddy footprints. Muddy footprints found on the floors of the mortuary, still wet, leads from the back exit of the mortuary to the embalming table. Okay. Let's see. A bouquet. A bouquet. A bundle of fresh blossoms, like that found on a grave. Why were they on the floor? <laughs> okay, we have Nerissa's workstation. Graveyard schedule. The records show two notable entries for today, both explicitly authorized by Abbot Gregory. One, funeral for Mother Miriam at sundown. Two, visit by Father Augustine. Unrestricted access granted. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, almost missed that bloody liver. Bloody liver, found on a table with other entrails, still partially warm and moist. It appears mangled in some way, perhaps smashed. Hmm. Okay, so I think we've looked at everything in this room. Maybe? We've got a shovel. Shovel, found hanging in the back area of the mortuary, heavy, bulky, and caked with dirt. So we can see that the muddy footprints lead all the way out here to that liver all the way out here let's see if this okay that did so let's go ahead and we'll talk to this woman right here Nerissa embalmer praise Ain Sof you must be the famed exorcist it is an honor sister I'm Nerissa and I serve Ain Sof by preparing the dead for burial 
I take pleasure in providing cleanliness and comfort for bodies after their souls have departed. I see. Nerissa, how did you know the victim? Not at all. The first time I saw him, he was curled in that grave, dirty and bloody. The whole afternoon, I prepared Mother Miriam's body for burial. There isn't much else to tell. Okay, so let's watch her. Early this afternoon, testimony. I informed Abraham of the funeral scheduled for this evening. From the grave to tell. Once Abraham left, I started preparing the body for burial. I was alone the entire time. No one came by. Mid-afternoon, Abraham barged into the mortuary, bellowing that the grave is now ready. I sent him away to focus. After Abraham's disturbance, I completed the embalming to the best of my humble abilities. Just after dark, I heard a scream from the back field. A dead body was found. Pardon. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll let's ask her about Miriam. Mother Miriam is beloved by everyone at St. Wallapurgas. I am honored to prepare her body for burial. Ask about her. I am Nerissa, the embalmer at the mortuary. I pray that I'm known for cleanliness and thoroughness. Okay, so let's ask her about some of this evidence. So the embalmed body. Uh, Mother Miriam, that was the body I was preparing for a funeral tonight. A horrible way to die. At least her inner organs were intact. What do you forget? I apologize for the filth. Normally the mortuary is kept pristine, I assure you. But today is hardly a normal day. Okay. I prepared these for visitors to the cemetery. You'd be surprised at how often people forget to bring anything to honor their loved ones. Okay, graveyard schedule. This is a smaller branch in the cemetery, a quieter space for more wealthy patrons. There were no other burials scheduled for today or even this week. Okay, asking about the bloody liver. That is Mother Miriam's embalmed liver. It seems rather deformed. What happened to it? My apologies, Sister Ada. I must have mishandled it. Organs are very delicate, you know. Due to the disturbances today, I haven't been able to focus properly. Okay, and then we'll ask her about the shovel. Abraham uses that to dig graves, but it's far too heavy for me to even carry. Okay. So let's go ahead and leave that. Okay, so let's head out here. Let's talk to... Augustine. You must be Father Augustine. The victim was your apprentice, correct? Correct. And you are Sister Ada, the exorcist. It is a unique pleasure. Thank you, but I only serve on soft according to my calling. Why are you here, Father? I'm visiting preparation for Mother Miriam's sudden funeral. It is a true blessing to witness your holy work, Sister Ada. I pray Isaac can rest in peace. How long did Isaac study under you? Did you know him well? He was a fine apprentice, a ready mind and willing soul. I will mourn him in my own way. But I must admit the prospect of witnessing an exorcism is an unexpected silver lining. Hmm. If I find you guilty, Father Augustine, you'd find the experience to be unpleasant. Tell me, what happened this afternoon? Leave nothing out. I began by ta taking an afternoon stroll. Okay, so let's watch his testimony. I arrived at the graveyard with Isaac for Mother Miriam's funeral. Isaac headed to the mortuary on a minor errand. Hello. 
Then I passed through the graveyard until I saw the statue of St. Walpurga. What craftsmanship, and so well maintained. Hmm. For most of the afternoon, I was walking through the graveyard, nearly observing and admiring. This guy has a creepy way of talking. Okay, so let's go ahead, since he's just strolling. Let's zoom through that. At sunset, I wandered to the back area to meet with Isaac. I was surprised to find an open grave with something inside. Died, Isaac. I was horrified to discover that it was Isaac's dead body. That's when I called for help. Okay, so let's ask him about Miriam. I only knew her by reputation. Abbot Gregory spoke very highly of her. Nerissa? I'd never seen her before, but she rushed from the mortuary when I called for help. She's reputably quite perceptive and reliable. She probably has more insight to help help you than with than I. Okay, ask about himself. My name is Augustine. I'm a scholar, primary of Damon and and Ether Technology. Yeah, we'll just even though he probably doesn't know anything, we'll just go ahead and ask him all these. Okay, about the bomb body, Mother Miriam's remains. I heard the accident was unsightly. I hope for a closed coffin ceremony. Many footprints. From Prince in the Mortuary. Unfortunately, I know nothing about this. Perhaps they are Isaac's. Okay. It's beautiful. Was it with Isaac? I'd ask him to fetch me a bouquet. Strange. Okay, graveyard schedule. Yes, as you can see, Mother Miriam's funeral is scheduled here. I have come to pay my respects. The ceremony was rushed, but I promised the abbot I'd do right by her. Bloody liver. This was in Mother Miriam's body. I've conducted several anatomical studies, and I've never seen an organ mangled this way. And the shovel. Even if I had seen that, it looks far too heavy for me to have used. Eh, you'd be surprised, dude. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Head down this way. Examine the headstone. Noble's grave. The Im immaculately maintained grave shows the genealogy of an illustrious family. There isn't a blade of grass out of place around the stone. Oh, we have a sickle. Its lightweight blade slides through the air to trim grass and chop weeds. Its sharp edge would easily injure someone. Okay, let's examine the statue. A statue of Saint Wallapurga, the founder of the abbey and patron saint of exorcists. Ether scanner. A portable ether power device for recording images and text. Okay, so let's talk to Abraham, the grave tender. Release me! I had nothing to do with that boy. He must be Abraham, the grave tender. I am. I've worked here for 30 years. Worked hard without complaint. Look around you. Every bush trimmed, every headstone polished because of me. I have done all that is asked of me and more. Yet the moment something goes wrong, I'm the one blamed. It's not personal. Even the most steadfast among us may fail, pray, may fall prey to Lucifer's whispers, Abraham. You dug the grave in which the victim was found, didn't you? Hmm. Actually, I didn't do anything today. Then who did? How would I know? I've been busy working, as always. As the grave tender, any crimes that took place here are your responsibility. If you are truly innocent, hide nothing. And tell me what happened. We'll find the truth together. That's funny, because didn't he just say he didn't do nothing all day? And then when I asked him, what did he do? He said, oh, I was working. I didn't dig the grave. I was working. But yet he didn't do anything. Let's watch his I testimony. spent the early afternoon tending to the bushes by the mortuary. Okay, so we'll go ahead and zoom past that. When I headed back to the mortuary... Nerissa told me there was nothing else special to do for the day, so I left her to her work. I walked through the mortuary, then headed downhill towards the benches. Okay, 
He's the one that had the sickle. I spent the remainder of the afternoon resting on a bench. Suddenly, I heard someone call for help from the backfield. I ran over, surprised to see a dead body in the grave. Pardon. Okay. Okay, about Mother Mary. Is that who the grave was for? If you say so, she must have been important to have a plot here. Nerissa. Nerissa handles all the business in the mortuary and tells me when there's things that need doing. We both take pride in our work and don't bother each other much. Suits me just fine. Hey, Augustine. I don't like speed speaking badly of others behind their backs, but honestly, he gives me the creeps. And about himself. I'm Abraham, the groundskeeper here. I polish the headstones, trim the bushes, that kind of thing. I've been doing this for many years. It's a good job, quiet, peaceful even most days. Okay, let's ask about the well, the bomb body. I usually only see the bodies when they're all cleaned up. Nerissa must not have finished this one yet. Muddy footprints. These can't be my footprints. It's true that I went inside the mortuary after working outside, but that was before the rain. The bouquet. Nerissa makes bouquets from a flower garden nearby. Visitors sometimes use them as offerings at the graves. Schedule. I don't know anything about this. Nerissa handles all the scheduling and tells me when I need to do something. Okay, bloody liver. You say that's a liver. If it is, looks like a dog got to it. The shovel. That's my shovel. It's built to last. Good workmanship. I usually leave it in the mortuary when I'm not using it. Okay, the noble's grave. Notice that? It's my family's old grave. We're not nobility anymore, but the abbey's grounds once belonged to my ancestors. It was all confiscated after my great uncle Sergius was branded a heretic. Too bad for the rest of us. Maybe it's on Soft's humor that I work the, the land now as a laborer. Life has its ups and downs. It's a good job. Okay, the sickle. The grass grows like weeds here. I use it to keep everything tidy and neat, the way a graveyard should be. Statue. That statue is always an ordeal to clean. A hundred some odd, old, odd years old already, as you probably know. Birds love making a mess on her head. I keep her sparkling clean, almost out of spite. Okay, and the ether scanner. I don't know what that is. Why would somebody put that on a grave? Okay, so let's leave him. See if there's any more evidence. I know we have to look at the body still. Oh, what's that? What is this? The devil's herb. I knew something nefarious is afoot. The happy must be purified of its scent. I should dispose of any that I find. Okay, so let's look at the victim's body. Isaac and the victim's body. Isaac, the victim, a teenage youth inspiring to be a scholar. Raised in the church, he joined Augustine as his apprentice eight months ago. And then the victim's body. The apprentice's useful face is serene above his cleanly slit throat with no bruising. However, an angry scar runs across his stomach. Well, the sickle would fit for the uh, slit throat for sure. So surgical multi-tool. Found on the staircase between the mortuary and the grave, an ether-powered tool for making incisions, applying preservatives, and closing wounds. Hmm, that could have been used too. Okay, so it looks like we might have seen anything other than talking to people about what we had just found too. Okay, so let's let's go back and ask about the evidence that we've just gathered. So let's ask him about the victim's body. Are you sure it wasn't an accident? It seems so strange to have a murder after all these years without any. Unfortunately, we're sure, Abraham. This was a Damon's work. A pity, and the boy so young too. I suppose it's part of Ansoff's will somehow. Let's ask him about the multi-tool. That's definitely Nerissa's. I've seen her using it at her table many times, getting the dead ready to rest. I suppose it cuts and injects and repairs. I've never used one myself. Okay, uh, let's ask him about Isaac, because I think that's the only person we haven't asked him about. 
That's the poor boy in the grave. Such a shame. I hadn't seen him while he was alive. Okay, so he didn't really have anything new to add with the new stuff, so let's run up here and talk to Augustine. Okay, so let's ask him about Abraham. I assume he keeps the grounds, but other than the statue, I don't see that there's much to do. Let's ask him about Isaac. Isaac was my apprentice. He had such potential. It breaks my heart to know it will never be reached. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't think we had all this stuff with him, so let's start with the noble's grave. It's preserved in a remarkable condition. Marvelous craftsmanship, too. A shame the family became disgraced. Sickle? That tall man with the beard. I think I saw him holding it at one point. Statue. Ah, good old Saint Wallaperga. Are you quizzing me about your own patron saint? I'm asking what it means to you, Father. Very well. It honors her final victory against Lucifer in the Abbey's Chapel, a true holy site. For 111 years, no daemons had been sighted in our world until today. Well, technically. Well, I guess it would be in one day from the last one. Okay, the Ither Scanner. That's my Ither Scanner. I use it to record images and parse them into glyphs. Victim's body. His face. It's as if he just fell asleep. But how could this be? He had no enemies. Is it possible I was the intended target? Horrifying to consider. Consider. Okay, and the surgical multi-tool. My path has not crossed with one of these devices before. It must be a tool of some sort, but what purpose, I can only guess. Okay, so we've asked him about everything. Let's go back up to the mortician. Nerissa. Okay, so we've asked her about that, that bloody liver. We asked, Okay, so the noble's grave. Abraham takes extra care in maintaining that grave. I often spot him standing over it. Okay, the sickle. That's Abraham's sickle for cutting back the grass. Any tools are stored in the mortuary back room, but I have no reason to even touch them. Okay, the St. Wallapurga, if I can talk. Uh, may St. Wallapurga watch over us all today. The ether scanner. A scanner. I don't use anything like that for my work. The victim's body. Can we perform an autopsy on the victim's body, Nerissa? I have your multi-tool here. Is this truly necessary, Sister Ada? The victim's cause of death is quite clearly from having his throat slit. There is something peculiar about the abdominal scar. Let's reopen it and see what lies within. As you wish, Sister. Please give me a moment. There. It's ready. Good. Let's have a closer look. Okay, strange liver. What's this? His liver. It's loose. It's not attached to the rest of his organs at all. So, found in the victim's body, detached from the rest of the organs, the liver is drained of blood and covered in some sort of chemical. Wow. Somebody did that fast. It's embalmed liver. You can tell by the patchy coloring. But I have no idea why it would be in the victim's body when he had only just died. Okay, so we've asked her... Yeah, we did the victim's body, so let's do the multi-tool. I found your multi-tool, Nerissa. I am truly grateful, Sister Ada. Where did you find this? It was lying in the grass near the rear staircase. Impossible, unless someone else had stolen it. Surely Abraham couldn't do such a thing. Okay, so we've asked her all that. Let's ask about... Uh, asked about herself. Augustine. Yes, he discovered the body. I don't believe I've ever met him before. Abraham. Abraham has been a groundskeeper at St. Wallaperga for years. He keeps himself just as well. I prefer to not be interrupted in my work. Let's ask about Isaac. He was found in the grave, correct? How dreadful. So young, too. I've never seen him prior to today. Okay, so we've asked all the things that we can. Alright, so let's go ahead and start back with Augustine. We'll just kind of work this way. Okay, so here's his. We've got a lot of stuff that's red in both areas. I arrived at the graveyard with Isaac for Mother Miriam's funeral. Isaac headed to the mortuary on a minor errand. Let's 
contradict him. Let's do it with the graveyard schedule because it seems like he would have known when it was supposed to be. Let's just try this. Lies unmasked. Why are you here, Father Augustine? Why visit a graveyard today? You seem to already know why. The mortuary's visitation records show that Abbot Gregory granted you unrestricted access. What is it that you are looking for? The reasons for my visit are of no importance to your investigation. It has no bearing on how Isaac died. Tell me anyway. I want the whole truth. If you must know, I'm here to examine the grave of Father Sergius. Sergius is a heretic who lived during St. Wallapurga's time. Scholarly pursuits, nothing of importance. Okay, so he amended his testimony. Oh, and you've also got his mind's eye. Evidence discovered admiration. And then I passed through the graveyard until I saw the statue of St. Walburga. What craftsmanship, and so well maintained. Okay, we can't verify. Can't really verify that, but I don't think we have anything. Let's try this. For most of the afternoon, draw. I was walking through the graveyard, merely observing and admiring. Okay, well that's not true because he was using that um, the scanner. That is a lengthy scroll. Tell me more. Stroll, scroll, stroll. Tell me more about what you were doing. You doubt me? Show me proof that I was doing something else. Well, he was using the scanner. He had admitted it to us that it was his. That's my ether scanner. I use it to record images and parse them into glyphs. Can I? There we go. Okay. There we go. Lies unmasked. During your so-called stroll, did you drop this on? Did you drop this by any chance? I found it placed in front of gravestones. What were you doing with it? This has nothing to do with Isaac's death. I shall be the judge of that. Tell me what you were doing. I was using that scanner to rec recover a lost hymn for Abbot Gregory to use in tonight's Mass. The last record of it is etched upon one of these gravestones. Okay, so that was amended. I also broke up his scroll. His scroll. Good lord. His stroll. At sunset, I wandered to the back area to meet with Isaac. Okay, I was so surprised to find an open when the sun was setting. I wandered to the back area okay, to meet so with Isaac and begin that. the funeral. Oh, I almost missed that. Okay, evidence discovered disappointment. Okay, so let's leave him. Let's go talk to Abraham again. I'm kind of feeling like it might be him. I mean, he, he's like really sore about what happened with his family, so. Okay, he's down here. Ten bushes, so this is unverified. It does seem kind of odd because he was using the shovel. I mean, I think he even said he was. I so spent let's, the early um, afternoon tending to the bushes by the mortuary. Contradict him with the shovel, because there's no way he was just using the sickle. Okay, lies unmasked. You might trim the hedges most days, but you didn't today, did you? The dirt on your shovel indicates that you did, in truth, dig the grave. That's true. It's a normal part of my job. I shouldn't have lied about it, I know. I worried that if I told the truth, I thought you'd think that I killed the boy, but I didn't. When you lie to me, you veil the truth from the eye of Ansov. Speak the truth now. There is no room for error in this investigation. Fine. I dug the grave for the funeral, just doing my job, but it was empty when I left it. Okay, so that really broke it up. Let's kind of... Larissa told me there'd be an urgent funeral in the evening. I'm not usually told who it's for. There was a grave to tell. So I picked up the shovel and went down to the rear plot to dig a new grave. Hello. 
The ground was hard. Took me some time to dig that hole. I took a long break while digging. It's within my rights. There wasn't anyone else around, so it was nice and peaceful. Then I got back to it and finished digging the grave. When the grave was ready, I walked back to the mortuary to let Nerissa know. When I headed back to the mortuary, Nerissa told me there was nothing else special to do for the day. So I left her to her work. I walked through the mortuary, then headed downhill towards the benches. Yeah, because that made more sense than him just, oh, I just wandered around all day not doing anything. Seems kind of odd. Why would he lie about doing the grave? So let's see what we get here in his mind's eye. Evidence, discovery, integrity. Okay. Let's go there. Rest I spent on the, the remainder of the afternoon resting on a bench. Well, that can't be true because he had the sickle in his hand when he rushed to the grave, so let's. Lies unmasked. The sickle was found by the gravestone that you were supposedly polishing. Admitted, Abraham, you left it there. Fine, of course I had the sickle. I had to tend to the grass around the graves. I didn't mention it because I thought it made me look suspicious. Now you've made yourself even more suspicious. Amend your testimony. Okay, so now it's verified. I had a sickle with me because I wanted to trim the grass around a grave in the front field. Which is his family's grave because that's what he did, so that makes more sense. I wonder where this is lit up. Because these are all verified, so... Alright, so let's go ahead and click on his mind's eye. Okay, evidence discovered grief. Well, that would be because of his family being taken out of nobility status. Okay, let's see if we can I had verify I walked through this. the mortuary, then headed downhill towards the benches. Hmm. Let's see. I placed my scanner in front of the gravestone. It would take some time to decode the etching. It took me a little while, but Wait, I found I then there, I saw I placed then I saw a strange I placed my sca then I saw a stranger pass by. He was tall, barrel chested. I think he was the groundskeeper. Afterwards I waited by the grave for my scanner to complete its task. It was taking longer than I expected, so I had to leave it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, then there's I placed definitely. my scanner. I walked through the mortuary, See, then headed he's downhill he towards the benches. This way. But when we look at Augustine's, he was coming from the actually the grave. Okay, so let's see. Mm. Okay, lies in mass. We're presenting when he observed Abraham. Lies, you didn't walk through the mortuary after speaking with Nerissa. You passed by the grave. Augustine saw you coming from the back fields. Fine, I did walk through the back fields, past the grave I dug. People always blame me for things I didn't do, so I didn't think you'd believe me. I'm sorry. I haven't said I believe you yet, but we'll see. What was in the grave when you passed by it? Nothing. There was no body, no blood. Nothing. Okay, so let's check out his mind's eye. He keeps, he's even more suspicious because he keeps lying about everything. So evidence discovered is the last scion. Okay. When the grave was ready, I walked back to the mortuary to let Nerissa know. I don't know why that was. 
Probably because it sends him going the back way. When I passed by the grave, yeah. it was still empty, ready for the funeral. I walked through the walls to reach the front field. I suppose that's when the scholar saw me. I had a sickle with me okay. because I wanted to trim. Sense. Okay, so let's leave. So we have all this admiration. We have disappointment. Okay, so let's see. Found in Augustine's sanctum. Augustine seems fixated on Sergius despite his heretical status. Augustine wishes Isaac had announced of Father Sergius' originality and spirit. Disappointment found in August sanctum. August or Augustine is unimpressed by his ex ex apprentice Isaac's recent research. A mediocre effort for somebody with such potential. Integrity found in Abraham's sacred. Sanctorium. He values honesty and sincerity. He genuinely loves trying to tie, lying to try to escape accusation. Grief found in Abraham's sanctum, though it was over a hundred years ago. Abraham mourns his family's fortune, so quickly reducing their status. And then we have the last scion found in Abraham's san sanctum. As the last descendant of a disgraced noble lineage, Abraham feels owed his family's legacy. Okay, so let's go up here and head to Narissa. Let's see if we can contradict some of the stuff she's saying. Okay, so that's... These two are unverified, so let's Once start Abraham with the prepared left, the body. I started preparing the body for burial. I was alone the entire time. No one came by. Okay, well, that's not true because yeah, that's around the time what's his name was in there. So let's see. Um, let's contradict it. Uh, can we do it with that? I don't think that contradicts what I said. Okay, um. Let's try this. Let's ask about it. No one came by at all. Nobody, which is perfect because I need the silence to focus. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. He said he talked to her. Wait, am I in the chair on this? Yeah. There we go. Lies and nest. Lies, Nerissa. Father Augustine saw you speak to Isaac by the entrance of the mortuary. Isaac entered the mortuary. Admit it. Very well. There's no use hiding it. Please know that nothing untoward happened. The victim only stopped by for a moment. Okay, so let's see this now. Early this afternoon, I informed Abraham of the funeral scheduled for this evening. I'm great to tell. The truth is that the apprentice did come by. He asked for a bouquet for the funeral later that day. Here in a hello. When I showed him the bouquet, he held it for a moment and then threw it on the floor. I suppose it wasn't to his master's tastes. I forgot to pick it back up. That's rude. Then the boy asked to be taken to the rear field before the funeral, so I led him out the back exit. Mind's eye. Evidence discovered famine survivor. A memory found in Orissa's sanctum. She grew up during the Great Famine, feeding on anything she could find. She eventually found sustenance, but at what cost? Hmm, let's ask about that. Without faith, I could never have preserved, persevered through those days. I'm very grateful to Ansoff and the kind souls of the church. Oh, I was hoping she'd talk about it. 
Okay, so let's see. So we've got that. Taking Isaac to that. That kind of doesn't make sense because around that time... Yeah, Abraham came in here. She would have seen him. Okay, so let's contradict that. that conflict revealed. I don't know why Abraham would lie, but the victim left through the door. I swear I saw it myself. So that's now unverified. It says, despite conflict with other testimonies or evidence, the suspect insists that the following is true. Okay. Hmm. I think that's new because I don't think we've ever seen that before. The boy asked to be taken to the rear fields before the funeral, so I let him out the back exit. Okay, so let's After try to this disturbance, one completely I completed unverified. the embalming to the best of my humble abilities. Okay, let's go with the liver. Because I would think she would know better than to do what she did with the liver. Lies unmasked. This liver is still bloody. How could you possibly claim that it is ready for burial? I couldn't finish the burial preparation in time because I misplaced my surgical tool. I searched all over the mortuary for it, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Okay, so now she's saying she looked for her multi-tool, so let's do the third eye first. Evidence discovered carnivore. Oh, she wasn't gonna like... She didn't gnaw on it, did she? Oh... Found in Orissa's sanctum, enjoys exotic cuts of meat, especially fresh entrails and organs. That's a cannibal, not a carnivore. That's creepy. Okay, so let's look After at this Abraham multi -tool. left, I noticed that my multi-tool wasn't in my pocket. I searched all over the mortuary for it, but it was missing. I did what I could without making new incisions. But that made things slower and messier. I'm not pleased with the results. And she's trying to cover up. She had a little snack while she After was doing Abraham the embalming. Left, I noticed that my multi-tool wasn't in my pocket. I okay, searched all so. over the mortuary for it, but it was missing. Hmm. So she doesn't go outside there, and we know that there's muddy footprints. So she would have had to have gone outside. But she's not saying she did. So let's go ahead and present that. Lies unmasked. Explain these muddy footprints, Nerissa. They indicate that someone left and then returned to the mortuary during the rain. Given that Father Augustine remained outside and that Abraham left before the rain, these must be your footprints. I'm sorry, Sister Ada, for the lies and for the filth. I can't wait to clean it up. I admit that I did step outside briefly to search for the multi-tool, but since it was raining, I couldn't find anything, so the embalming remains sadly unfinished. Okay, so now she admits that she searched outside. I was desperate to find the tool to finish my work. I tried searching outside, but I couldn't find anything in the rain. And she tried to I did what I could without making new incisions, but that made things slower and messier. Okay, so let's I'm do her mind's eye. Oh, evidence discovered cannibal. I already figured that one out. She was chewing on that liver while she was working. That's highly disgusting. Okay, so I think it was Nerissa for sure. It has to be because none of her stuff makes sense. We have this conflict here where she insists... Uh, that she walked Isaac out, but yet the guy, you know, I mean, he was there. He didn't see it. She lied about going outside and coming back in, and it would make sense. So let's go ahead and accuse her. 
cannibal. Found in Orissa's sanctum a deep temptation to devour human flesh. How long has she felt this hungry? Yuck. Okay, so let's go ahead and cues her. Let's start with means. If you think I did it, then tell me how could I have done it? Do you see a weapon anywhere? Well, that's easy. Or a multi-tool. The surgical multi-tool. It's designed for precision incisions into hardened tissue. It would have sliced through a living body with ease. Huh, maybe Isaac caught her eating her liver. And so she was silencing him. So besides, nothing else could have allowed the killer to seal the wound on the victim's stomach. Okay. Mm, do we have two opportunities we have to do? Preparing the body occupied me the entire afternoon. When could I have done such a thing? Okay, let's do... Um... Let's try this when he got mad about the bouquet, maybe. You killed Isaac while he was visiting the mortuary to fetch the bouquet. I admit he came by, but he left shortly afterwards. If he died in the mortuary, why was his body found in the grave? Because his body was moved. This was when it happened. Okay, so now we have to say when it happened. I'm thinking... Oh, so when she was supposedly searching for her tool... It would have been there. That's what I'm assuming. After you dismissed Abraham, you went. You weren't searching for the multi-tool. You dragged the victim's body to the grave, hoping to bury it before anyone arrived. Okay, and her modem? Or modem. Her motive? I've never even met the victim before today. Why would I want to kill him? What would I have to gain? Well, she was a cannibal. And I'm leaning towards he caught her feeding is what I think is what it's going to be. Could be wrong, but we'll see. Your austere childhood has led you to develop a deep craving for exotic meats, especially a certain rare flesh that had sustained you in a time of need. Working as an embalmer must have tempted you, day in and day out. You were so virtuous for so long. You would handle the organs as part of preparing the bodies. You could easily imagine the taste, the texture, yet you resisted. Then Isaac arrived and the daemon spoke. You could no longer ignore your hunger. A fresh, juicy liver at your fingertips. It would be so much tastier than the cold entrails you handled from corpses. All you had to do was slit open his stomach like you've done hundreds of times before. Okay? That sounds good. That's what I figured. Cues. Ain Suf sees all, Narissa. You are the only person who could have killed Isaac. Do you deny it? She's even got blood on her lips, man. Curse you. And curse Ain Suf. How can the eye see all? Does it see my suffering? Where was Ainsoff when my family was dying in the street? Chewing on leather just to live another day? The famine was a test, Nerissa. Ainsoff wanted you to demonstrate your faith, your will to live. Have you ever felt true hunger? When you haven't eaten for days, reality shifts. The body needs. We all have our challenges set out before us, Nerissa. Some more difficult than others. Do you think I was the only one that fed on human flesh? It's not for me to judge what you did back then. That's between you and your confessor. But today, you murdered an innocent youth so that you could feed on his liver. A daemon has possessed you. Confess, Nerissa. Speak the truth. It is time. This afternoon at around 2 o'clock, I informed Abraham of the funeral scheduled for this evening. Oh, can I play that and it'll read it? I don't Early remember. this yep. afternoon, I informed okay, good, I Abraham of the funeral scheduled for this evening. I'm grave to tell. The truth is, that boy did come by. He asked for a bouquet for the funeral later that day. I'm grave to tell. 
when I brought him to the bouquet table. I don't know what came over me. The hunger clenched my belly suddenly. I've seen the butchers do it. It only took a quick slash to his throat, and he fell to the floor. I knew where to get the best cut. His liver. It was still warm. I couldn't believe the taste. Like nothing I've eaten before. Heavenly. Oh, that's really horrifying. Then, Abraham barged into the mortuary, bellowing that the grave is now ready. I sent him away to focus. My senses were returning, and I clean up my mess. I sealed the boy's body, putting the liver from the body I had been embalming inside and sealing it. I carried him to the new grave and quickly tossed him in. I heard someone coming, so I didn't have time to bury him. I was shaking with adrenaline. In my hurry to return to the mortuary, my multi-tool must have slipped out of my apron's pocket. I stored what was left of the liver among the other entrails, hoping to finish it later. Oh. I wanted to savor its deep, rich flavors. Sooner than I anticipated, I heard a scream from the back field. <clears throat> Someone had already discovered the body. Okay, so let's click on our one time. Clarissa's wretched soul is twisted by demonic influence. I must speak the daemon's true name. Then the daemon will be cast out and be banished to the ether. Ain Suf, guide me. What daemon has possessed Nerissa? Okay, we have Lucifer the Proud, Bales above the Gluttonous, Lotan. The envious and Santhus the vengeful. Well, as it has to do with food, in a way, I'm going to go with Beelzebub the gluttonous. Out, Beelzebub! Leave this soul and return whence you came! No! We must feed! Nerissa! Delicious, scrumptious little morsel! We must have more. The hunger is an endless pit. More! Speak, Beelzebub. Why has your kind returned? Hunger is a primal need. Just as you feed on lesser life forms, growing them in captivity for slaughter, we feed on you. The meat of your emotions, the marrow of your deepest desires. You will prey upon us no longer, Beelzebub. Return to the Aether, and never come back! I must obey for now, but we won't be gone too long. Tonight, Lucifer will open the gates of hell. I won't be the only one allowed to feast. Aya, you juicy little morsel. We shall devour you soon. You and all the other delicacies. Nerissa. Do you hear me, Nerissa? Was I too late? Does nothing remain of your soul? Goodbye, Nerissa. May Aang Sof make you whole again. So this is the power of an exorcist. I've dreamed of seeing this. It looks a bit different than I imagined, however. What's happening to her? Look out! Huh? Halt, Nerissa! <coughs> Good. I've stunned her. Are you alright, Sister Ada? Yes. You came just in time. My thanks, Virgil. I'm so save us. Another possession. Another killing. How is this possible? Who is responsible? Virgil! 
You have failed us. How could you allow this to happen? Unfortunately, Father, I believe you are primarily responsible. We should have listened to Ada. She warned us about the contaminated body, and its demons spread, just as she said. We must act now. We can't waste any more time bickering about who's to blame. The daemon within Nerissa spoke of Lucifer's return. He walks among us. It's perverse that they would return now on the holiest of days. Why? Are we being punished? It doesn't matter why. The Abbey is unsafe, Father. Cancel the Mass. Send the Pilgrims home. If you proceed, you are risking all their lives. No, Father. You must stay the course. We've worked too hard for this moment. Okay, this guy, there's something up with him. I don't trust him. I have decoded the ancient hymn of communion. The Mass can proceed as planned. This chance will not come again for another century. It's literally the last chance we have in our lifetime. What is the significance of that hymn? Why must it be sung tonight? According to Augustine's research, it honors St. Walpurga and her victory, in a way uniquely pleasing to Einsdorf. I protest. But if you absolutely must hold the Mass, at least allow me to guard you at the altar. You are putting yourself in danger. What if you were possessed? That may be unwise, Father. Surely if things are as dangerous as you say, nobody should be trusted. This guy's shady. How do we know this supposed exorcist is not the pawn of Lucifer? Oh, now he's going to turn it on That's us. That's absurd! You witnessed the exorcism! No, I saw her turn a woman into a rabid beast. What really transpired in the ether when she supposedly exorcised these demons? She invokes the demons' names. She knows them more intimately than any of us. I speak their names to control them and then banish them. You know this. Or perhaps you are being used by them. How would we know? The only thing that possesses me is the flame of Ain Suf. I shouldn't have to defend myself. Actually, what Augustine says makes sense. We should be extra cautious, just in case. I don't want you at the Mass. If you truly believe Lucifer lurks at my abbey, find him. Unmask him. Search the grounds as you like, but stay away from the chapel or I will have you put in a cell. Nothing can be permitted to interrupt the mass and the hymn. Especially after the events of today, Saint Walpurga deserves to be honored for her victories. Inquisitor, Augustine, come. We have much to prepare. Very wise, father, as always. Farewell, sister. It would be best if you were wrong, Ada. But I'm filled with dread. That's because it is. Lucifer will strike tonight, Virgil. I only pray he strikes at me instead of at the mass. Stay vigilant. Poisoned by Father Augustine against me. Abbot Gregory ordered I remain outside the chapel for his mass. At midnight, the gathering pilgrims lifted their voices in praise to Ansoft, but they were cut short by a thunderous crash. Another soul taken. Okay, guys, so we're going to end it there, and we'll be finishing, I believe it's the final chapter. I think there's only three in this, I'm not entirely sure. But that was the second part of Lucifer Within Us. You know, let me know down in the comments, what did you think of that uh, last um, mission there? It definitely went in a direction I was not expecting, for sure. I wasn't expecting it to be a cannibal. Uh, but it was quite interesting, and I, I have a feeling that Augustine isn't who we think he is. I think there's something going on with him, and I almost feel like him insisting on this hymn being done. It's going to be a summoning of to summon Lucifer or something. I just kind of have a feeling that that's what this is all about. So let me know in the comments what you think. Please like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, please share this video with anybody who might find it interesting, and we'll see you next time. Bye.